We were woken up about half past five, and then they would bring us uh, to the quarry. We then worked here with uh, pigs and uh, spades. We sang uh, freedom songs as we worked. And then uh, the authorities prohibited us from singing and uh, drove us very hard. <laughs> the psychological persecution, that was very painful and of course uh, wounds uh, which cannot be seen. Politically, was the sacrifice worth it? Yes, certainly. Oh, yes. Distance, please. Yes. Hello? How are you? Distance. Uh, look out at my phone. Look out at the phone. Hello? Hello? Hello, Jim. How are you? Nice to see you. Hello, hello, Sean. How are you? Hello, Jim. Hello, how are you? Thank you. Nice to see all of you. Hello. All of you. Is this your second time back? Yeah. 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 All right, we'll have one more. Oh, hello, Mark. How are you? Okay, there, Dan. Nice to see you. Ah, that's good. That's very good. Ah, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Ah. Are you tempted to spend the night? Well, uh, uh, it depends what you want me to do. I'm entirely in your hands. Eh? How about if we go and have lunch first and then we can have as many shots and everything? Okay. All right. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. If we can ask you just to ask you. Well, there is an article which I caused a lie. Yes. Uh, on the, the nuclear. The nuclear. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I find it difficult to personalize the political experiences we have had in prison. But my advisor here, especially Ajil, has told me that uh, this is an occasion when I should talk about myself and not be shy to do so. <laughs> I'm still reluctant to do so because uh, we are the product of a collective leadership. And uh, almost everything we have achieved, we have achieved together, no matter who uh, originated a particular proposal. But uh, this is the day, as you know, when I was released from prison. Lockdown. And um, there is a little bit of an irony in the sense that uh, uh, Mr. de Clark called me on the 9th of February uh, to Dame Hayes and told me that I'll be released on a Sunday. 
I then said to him, please give me two weeks uh, before you release me so that uh, I can arrange with my people outside so that they can uh, uh, receive me. And uh, I was afraid that the release would be chaotic uh, if I'm suddenly uh, released without them knowing. And they had proposed that uh, they would fly me to Johannesburg, keep me somewhere, and then on a Sunday, uh, the 11th, they would then phone uh, my colleagues and say, come and take him. And um, that uh, discussion started at 6 uh, p.m. and uh, we finished at five minutes past 12 at midnight. And uh, but eventually, they uh, stuck uh, to their decision because already they had, uh, it transpired that they had already informed the press, both local and international, that I would be released on the 11th. Well, it was a wonderful day uh, to be free and uh, to be able uh, to participate in uh, the <clears throat> political activities in the country. I had said uh, both uh, uh, to Mr. Peter Blue Botha when I saw him in July 1989, and then on the three occasions in which I met uh, Mr. de Klerk, that uh, if they want me to release me uh, to play a constructive role, they must unban my organization. And I said, if they release me with my organization unbanned, out to be here, be back here the following day. Well, they had asked me you know, to make uh, certain pledges and so on, which I refused, as you know, to do. But uh, Minister Kobe Kutsia, with whom I originally discussed the whole question of the ANC and the government sitting down uh, to discuss a peaceful settlement, was very helpful in this. He is the man who actually not only opened the doors for me to meet Mr. De Klerk, but um, uh, who risked his whole political career at a time when not a single member of the National Party was prepared uh, to associate himself with the question of my release. He had that courage, he had that vision. And uh, my release uh, putting it in the context of the struggle that was going on in the country, especially the activities of Home Conde was seized, and uh, the mass action which our people had embarked upon, as well as the contribution of the international community through sanctions, were responsible for the release of, the, of political prisoners in this country. And it is not correct at all when uh, Mr. de Klerk says uh, he released uh, political prisoners. <clears throat> of course, uh, he was the head of the government, and uh, he had the key to the prison doors, and we couldn't uh, uh, leave prison without him turning the key. Uh, but uh, that is the only extent uh, to which he's responsible uh, for bringing about changes here. These changes came about as a result of the activities of uh, the public, both inside and outside the country. And of course, one is aware, of course, that even amongst uh, uh, prison authorities and uh, sergeants of the press, there was a demand that we should be released. And uh, one has to take into account uh, all these factors. Now, I have been asked what was in my mind when I came here for the first time, and what was in my mind the three <laughs> occasions in which I visited jail after I had been released. On the first occasion, I was coming to the unknown. And naturally, I was very much concerned as uh, to how I am going to be received, <clears throat> how I am going to be treated, what type of life I, am going to, I was going to spend. These were all in my mind. And uh, an element of concern was there, and insecurity. But uh, when I came back uh, for the first time after my release, I was coming here to persuade about 25 of my comrades 
who refused to leave prison as a result of negotiations and who said that they wanted to be released by the, their own army, Um Kondo Wasiri. And uh, I uh, persuaded them uh, as much as I could. Some of my comrades, like uh, Comrade Ahmed Katrata, had been here to talk with them, and I think the deputy chief. And um, we were happy, therefore, that they eventually agreed uh, to come out. And uh, I must uh, again stress that it was just not, it was not only just my persuasion. My comrades had done so on uh, two previous occasions. Now, one uh, can uh, uh, say quite a lot of things which uh, can hold us up, you know, for hours. I just want to be brief uh, that uh, one of the saddest moments uh, in my life in prison was the death of uh, my mother. My mother was completely unschooled. She had never been to school. And uh, up to the age of nine, she tried to send me to school. And uh, then uh, at the age of nine, I was taken over by, uh, according to genealogy, he was uh, my son by the acting king of the tribe. And uh, he then sent me to school and treated me like his child. But uh, when I uh, practiced as a lawyer, I then tried to support my mother. But uh, when I came to prison, it was very difficult, of course, for me to do anything to support her. She came a couple of times to visit me. But the last time she came to see me, it was in 1968. <clears throat> and um, I could see that uh, she was at work. And uh, as she left, I looked at her as she walked up to the harbor. I had the feeling that uh, I had seen her for the last time. And uh, that was the case. She died and I uh, tried uh, to get permission uh, from the authorities to and, uh, bury her. But they refused. <clears throat> they said, well, it's not because of you, but uh, we are not sure what your people will do when uh, you go out to the funeral. Then uh, the next shattering experience was the death of my eldest son in a car accident in Ulster mm -hmm. here. He was not only my son, but a friend. <clears throat> and uh, I was very hurt indeed that I could not uh, pay respects uh, my last respects to my mother and to my eldest son. There was also the harassment of my wife and children by the uh, authorities. <clears throat> she was, uh, she lost her job as a social worker in Paragonath. She went to work for the Child Welfare Society. She lost her job as a result of pressure from the police. She went uh, from job to job. Every time uh, she got a job, they went uh, to the employer. And they say, you're looking for trouble. Get rid of this woman. <clears throat> they also did the same thing to my children. Uh, my wife uh, found it better to send them to a colored school. When she was detained uh, for almost a year, they continued to pay her. Then she came back and they re-employed her. And uh, then she was deported uh, to Brantford in the Free State. They continue to pay her, nevertheless. And uh, <clears throat> those are the things that worried me. And then also there was the question of the psychological persecution. Whenever something happened to the family, at that time we did not get newspapers. Whenever anything happened to the family, I would come back, you know, from the, from the span, from the quarry, and find on my desk a cutting uh, so that I should see what is happening to my family outside. Uh, that was very painful, and of course, uh, wounds uh, which cannot be seen 
are more painful than the ones that, that you can see, which can be cured by a doctor. And uh, I spend a terrible time without sharing my pain with anybody. But of course, we had uh, very lovely moments. I was in the company of uh, great comrades, both uh, inside uh, the ANC and outside. Uh, comrades like Governor Mbeki here, like Walter Sisulu, Raymond Mklava, uh, Ahmed Katrata, Lalu Chiba, um, Eddie Daniels. All of them were wonderful comrades. When you sat down with them uh, to have discussions, you felt you were a new man. Um, there was a Neville Alexander, who was the leader of an organization called Abdusa, which was an offshoot uh, from the unity movement. Now, that was a remarkable uh, comment. He had obtained his doctorate in, in German literature uh, in uh, Frankfurt. It, it, he is a leading intellectual, and uh, he could marshal his arguments very well <coughs> uh, to answer uh, his arguments. Uh, he did a great deal to keep the morale of the prisoners very high. Then uh, there was the question of uh, uh, negotiations. I have explained this in meetings of the National Working Committee. Now, I was separated from other prisoners uh, in uh, November 1984. And uh, then I thought I should approach the government and uh, ask for a meeting between the government and the ANC. You were waiting for all this time. You should have done this long ago. Then I called uh, Comrade Katrana. He's here. It was a stage uh, between prison and uh, freedom. The only thing uh, that uh, indicated that I was a prisoner was that uh, there was security walls around the building. But otherwise, I was free. And uh, I had uh, warrant officer SWAT. Uh, who was uh, doing the catering for me. He would come at 7 o'clock and uh, leave at uh, 4 o'clock. <clears throat> and uh, he was uh, remarkable as members of different political organizations. We could now start a debate on questions of unity and common approach to problems. And of course, in fighting jail conditions, we always went together. <clears throat> uh, but secondly, you were able to stand away from yourself in prison and uh, be able to assess uh, your contribution and the mistakes that you had made in the course of your political activity. That helped us a great deal, the ability to think about your political activities and to plan for the future is one of the things <coughs> which uh, we gained in spite of the fact that uh, it was tra a tragedy to spend so many years in prison. But uh, it gave us that opportunity of sitting down to think about problems and to plan, and uh, to be able to read a newspaper from page one right up to the advertisements and so on, because you have enough time. And um, as I come back here, uh, these are the things that are crossing my mind. Thank you. Can I just hang, on, hang on a second, on, because I'm just worrying about time. Because I think, you know, we'll take a question, but if I could just say... Well, you must ask the steps questions. That's right. And uh, they have more information than I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't trip, steps. Uh -huh. Oh, I see, yes, that's the, the what call it, yes. The, yes, the sunglasses. Yes. Good. Sorry, be careful, be careful. Mandela, what does coming back here mean to you? Well, um, firstly, let me just uh, 
relate some incident here. I was given uh, six days spare diet because uh, I was arguing with one comrade, Andrew Masondo, who is now in uh, our military headquarters, as to whether there has ever been a tiger in South Africa. <laughs> we got involved in this argument. And then uh, the warder came to me and he says, uh, Mandela, uh, you take, talk too much, but you, you'll work too few. <laughs> and uh, so we continued with the argument. And uh, he had me charged. That's uh, the first uh, sentence I served here. Um, six days spread out because uh, I worked uh, too few. And uh, what do you want me to do now? Just do the poll. Move the mic to everybody. You want me to come back? I'm sorry, I thought uh, you didn't want me to be with you. Well, I used to be good uh, those days, yeah. and uh, I haven't used a pick for a long time now. <clears throat> but I think that uh, I would easily pick up the skills. <laughs> Mr. Mandela, can I ask you, you, you explained earlier on um, what personal suffering you endured with the loss of your mother, your eldest son. When you come back to this island and reflect on your time here, do you not think it was too big a sacrifice? Was it really that worthwhile? Well, uh, as I have... Uh, said on previous occasion, I was not the only one on this island. And um, there are many of my comrades who may have uh, sacrificed uh, far more than I did. And uh, some of them, you'll remember, never returned. They died on the island here. At least um, I have been able to come out and uh, make uh, some contribution, however humble, however modest, uh, to the national debate that is going on in the country today. But was everyone's sacrifice worthwhile in the end? It was a high price. I, well, <clears throat> I am not the only one who has sacrificed either in this and, and other countries. Um, there are great figures who have gone through this experience and uh, who came out uh, feeling stronger, feeling more determined, and feeling more committed uh, to democratic values. And uh, it is experiences of that nature that um, uh, gives us encouragement. And to feel that uh, whatever, however long we spend in jail, nevertheless, it is a sacrifice, a sacrifice that is worthwhile. So, Mr. Mandela, could you describe a typical day when you had to come from the prison and come and work here and what it was like? Yes, well, uh, we woke up, I think, uh, we are woken up about half past five, and then uh, they uh, opened for us and we went to the bathroom uh, uh, to freshen up, and then we had breakfast, and then I think about uh, seven to half past seven, they would bring us uh, to the quarry. Sometimes we walk all the way from the prison, other times uh, they put us uh, on a truck. One of the problems they had, they didn't want us to conduct, to meet uh, the common law prisoners or political prisoners from other sections. And uh, uh, because uh, there was a great deal of interest in prisoners in our section, because the more well-known prisoners like uh, Ahmed Kathrad, uh, the deputy president here, Walter Sisulu, Governor Big, Andrew Mlangeni, um, they were in this section. And uh, the rest of the prisoners were keen uh, to see them. And uh, so the other days they brought us by truck. 
We then uh, worked here uh, with uh, pigs and uh, spades. And uh, at first, there was no break until 12 o'clock when we then uh, uh, adjourned to have lunch. Um, our lunch uh, con com was consisted of millis, boiled millis, and uh, something called puza manja, literally drink power. Is powder mixed with yeast and sugar. If it is thick, then it's a very enjoyable drink. But of course, the smuggling was very rife, and uh, you got a weak mixture, and it was uh, tasteless. And uh, but nevertheless, we survived. Well, um, it was hard at first because uh, our hands were not used uh, to hard work and uh, some of us developed blisters. But uh, the body you know, can easily adjust. And uh, we kept ourselves in high spirits. Uh, we sang uh, freedom songs as we worked. And uh, the spirit, you know, the, the spirit was very high. And then uh, the authorities, in order to make us feel uh, the, uh, the hard work, they prohibited us from singing. And uh, at the same time, it uh, drove us very hard. They were very harsh at times because uh, one of the tactics they used was to decide before we left the prison that today we should punish so-and-so and so-and-so for refusing to work. You would come here and work hard, and then at the end of the day, they say, now so-and-so and so-and-so, uh, you must appear before uh, the head of prison for being lazy to work, and they would punish you. And, um, but um, uh, we came to enjoy our work. Did they ever punish you? Did they ever punish you? Well, I was punished several times as I was saying that uh, I was punished, I say, for this, uh, for being involved in this argument, whether there's a tiger in this country or not. <laughs> is, this, is this quarry where a lot of the political education took place? Well, yes. And how are you able to do political education when you're swinging a pick and a spade? No, it was easy because uh, you can um, uh, discuss, have very serious discussions whilst you're working. And uh, as I said, uh, Neville Alexander, Dr. Neville Alexander, conducted classes here, and it did very well. Academic, and, uh, academic classes, yes. And uh, Comrade Cathy here is a product of uh, Dr. Alexander. Can I ask you, Mr. Mandela, uh, President de Klerk says this, mm. that April's elections are about the future, they're not about the past. He would probably say that your visit here today and your visit to Victor Vestaire was exploiting people's emotions about the past. What would you say to him? Well, uh, I would prefer for this occasion <coughs> to forget about Mr. de Klerk. <coughs> In any case, uh, South Africa is going to forget about Mr. de Klerk after the 27th of April. But we are, so we, can we, are we leave him alone? And this obviously is going to be broadcast. Is this going to be the strategy of the ANC, that, that you will be used to remind people of the past in these emotional terms? Oh, no. That is not our strategy. We have got a plan uh, to implement on almost every issue, on health, uh, bringing about a better life for our people, education, jobs, and um, we are putting this uh, to our people. And uh, we are not worried about the past because the people know about the past. It's no use arguing who actually defeated apartheid because the people know. And uh, that is what uh, the nationalists want us to do, to discuss the past. And uh, because they can have an answer and say, well, we have forgotten the past, we are a new party. The essence now is to get the people to compare the policies of the ANC and that the programs of the ANC and that of the National Party. And we have no interest in discussing the past. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, in many respects, although it was a tragedy to be in jail, our people outside were suffering far more than we did. And uh, abroad, uh, at the beginning, people like Oliver Tambo, uh, <clears throat> a BSc graduate, a very polished musician, now 
Uh, these are very important and sensitive questions. We have to resolve uh, the question of uh, the threatening violence. We have to talk to those who fear democracy. And uh, it should not be much of a question, you know, of uh, discussion with the media, except just to brief you. There are very sensitive discussions that are going on, and we are keen that those discussions should bear fruit. And uh, therefore, to talk about uh, imprisoning people at the present moment uh, is premature and can harden attitudes. You know what yes? I want to say to you, you know what this day does to me? The people. Yes. My officials well, were waiting. They are waiting, eh? I think oh. we should walk, H.S. Eh? Oh, I see. Well, we... A more positive approach is more creative, is more important. But we you must see? never do it to other people again, you see. No. Put a positive approach. Our courage, our determination, and the manner in which we have turned this to sure. victory. Yeah. What is the excitement now? <laughs> my, my, you know what is my theme for this, Diva? Yes. From prison to parliament. <laughs> I say. That's my theme. Well, uh, Joe has got this nice story Joe, about the Sandinistas, JS, oh, yeah. uh, where they uh, won power and they went to parliament and then they said, what now? Well, I can't see huh? it. Mr. Mandela, did you win the argument about the tiger? <laughs> <laughs> well, I lost it because I went uh, for a what call? I went uh, for... That's one of the songs we used to sing. Do you have a particular one in mind, Mr. Mandela? <coughs> no. We had uh, solos, but I have forgotten now. <laughs> well, the words, uh, what does Mr. Solos have in his What it means, what, what it means, go move underground on those mountains. It's actually a song which uh, is the product of uh, the revol armed struggle, there revolution you are. struggle. There you are. That's what uh, it means. There you are, yeah. Yeah. Incidentally, we once put up a play called Antigone, as you know. He oh, yeah. was King Creon. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. And then uh, to the Kramat. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, well, no, that's good. That's very good. Uh, Robin Island okay. pickaxe huh? or something. <laughs> very good. All right, let's One go. One day it's coming, Jeremy. Too early. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll just let me discuss it until you later. Where are we going to now? To the prison. To the prison, eh? Yes. I see, good. Very good. Yes, well, during our days, okay. it used to be, you know, the, the world, uh, what do you call it, the door was totally different during our days. And uh, the whole of this section was open. Uh, is it a poignant moment for you walking through? Huh? Is it a poignant moment for you walking through? Well, um, I have been here now three times after I was released. <laughs> So uh, I'm used to it. It's not like the first time I came to the island. What was that like? Well, as I said, you see, I was uh, coming to the unknown at the time, and I was full of anxiety and uh, even concern. But now, well, I know where I'm coming to. 
and I know that it will be possible for me to go back today. <laughs> Mr. Mandela. Okay, come, come. Come along. Well, uh, uh, it may be a bit of an exaggeration uh, because uh, I have never attached any particular importance to sunset. And um, I really did not miss it. But of course, I would have been happier if I was uh, free to see anything I might enjoy at the time. But I had no particular fascination in seeing uh, the sunset. All right, well. All right, can we come in? Are you ready? Yes, we can move in now. Good. We brought our complaints here. And this is the reception uh, where our money is, you see, the records, all the records are kept here. Uh, when you come for the first time, yes, quite. Yeah. Uh, jog here uh -huh. around. And yeah. tennis here How was your well. tennis? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. This was very good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you box? Now, uh, no. The only person who could box is Andrew. No, no. And uh, But uh, we had Nell no boxing Andrew. gloves. Now, Nell. Yes. Tell them about the occasion when a number of journalists oh, came. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I've already told them. <laughs> <laughs> We are yeah. here one. with five pounder hammers, and that morning they brought old pieces of linolea and put them in front of the stones on which we used to sit. And as they came here, they asked for Comrade Nelson, and uh, who talked to them that there was a doorway here those days. And the moment they were out of this section, <laughs> those pieces of linoleum were taken away and the sucking on which we sat on the stone, taken away. Also at the same time. Right, right. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you are still here and there. Uh -huh. When Elias Mtsualedi dug, it's all rock here under. Yes. He dug up there and planted those vines. Yes. And that whole row, it was flowers. And he planted those trees. Yes. Still has to swallow. No, I was still here. You're still here? I was still here. Now, he had such a beautiful garden of flowers here yes. that he often gave to the waters. To waters, the officers, when oh, they yeah. came round, they came, went up. Before that, uh, we had a garden here. Yes, yes. That where was before we before this wall. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, yeah. Before this, Pardon? that's right. And yeah. Comrade Nelson dug into the garden and hid some ah. of his stuff. <laughs> what did he hid? Some of his stuff. His stuff. An autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> but they found that eventually, didn't they? Yeah. They yeah. found yeah. that when they were putting up this wall. This one. Why was that never now it's being published in August this year. <laughs> <laughs> the same when smuggled out. Does it still have the dirt stains on it? <laughs> Does it still have the dirt stains on it? <laughs> <laughs> she was born, yes. you see, during the Rinda oh, Pierce yes. When he was in Derry? Oh, I see, yes. I didn't know that. And it was a particularly painful thing. Absolutely. You know? What was your mother's name? Uh, they're at Fanny. And <laughs> 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 Name? My son was. I want you to look out into the courtyard, okay? Oh, I see, okay. Okay. Sorry. Just this one? Thank you. I see. Half shade, half shadow. Okay. I see, good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. A bit more in this way, sorry? Where? Huh? You must be that side. Okay. Ah. Mr. Mandela, okay. we need to get in here. No, we're not. Huh? We're not. <laughs> Unfortunately, not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, what is it? Are you all right? Good. I didn't believe it. Yeah. I just wondered if you remembered these uh, pictures. Oh, yes. What was this paper my lot taker uh, took this picture? Yes. Yeah. Shh. 
Well, I almost turned back. Well, I stayed here <coughs> until uh, the 31st of March, 1982, when I was transferred uh, to Polsmo, together with uh, Comrade Sisulu, Kovan Mbeg, uh, no, no, Sisulu, Ahmed Kathrada, Raymond and Shaba, and um, Andrew Mlangin. What do you feel as you come back into the room? Well, uh, I... Emotions? <coughs> Now, I've been here three times since I was released. And uh, every time I come in, in spite of the tragedy of having been uh, in prison for 27 years, but every time uh, I come here, uh, my memories, recollections are dominated by pleasant uh, memories because uh, some of the import most important decisions, politically, I made them here. And uh, it was here that uh, I learned the art of trying to look at ourselves, the work that we did. One of the things that has worried me a great deal, it worries me even today, is that uh, when uh, I arrived in Johannesburg, I had a real hard time uh, because I had run away from a forced marriage and uh, my uh, uh, guardians had neglected me. <clears throat> and uh, many people were very kind to me. Then uh, my position improved and uh, became a lawyer, and I forgot about uh, the people who had assisted me. It was only when I was here that uh, I thought about uh, the irresponsibility. But uh, of, politically, uh, politically, was the sacrifice worth it? Yes, certainly. Oh, yes. yes certainly. Could we have yes. 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 Can we just I would like uh, to sit down here. I don't know whose uh, path this is. You know? Just just briefly, just to give it the... We need no, no, the dimension of the cell. Uh? We just need the size of the cell. We just need the size of the cell. No, no, no. I would like to respect stand something. Just stand by it. Out, yes, I would like to res respect... Well, our what call was... Uh, it's very small, isn't it? It's very totally different. Our bed was totally different. Okay. It was bigger and high, you know? And uh, it was actually for medical reasons because uh, they put a plank underneath uh, the mattress. So it's that... A, um, it's a very small cell, though, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, it didn't appear to be small at the time now, but I now realize How that it is very small. Is. Thanks yeah. very much, guys. Okay. I think we might... Oh. Oh. Where is the coming? Bye-bye. Oh, look so happy. There we go. Can you wave? Yes. This. You have the other side. Have a nice time, eh? Did you manage to talk through the windows to colleagues at the time? Well, uh, across that wall, there was no wall at the time, and people were being funny, who were funny, from the other section. We used to talk to them. Then uh, the authorities discovered that we could speak to them. Then they moved them to the other side of the passage so that uh, we could have no access to them. But then, uh, nevertheless, uh, the only place where they could uh, exercise was uh, uh, on the pavement, and, uh, and we could see them. So then they built this wall to make it impossible that there should be access between us. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Mr. Mandela. Today is an historic day for him, but also for me, because I don't live on the island anymore. I haven't for three years now. So it's, I'm also visiting today with Mr. Mandela. And um, it's an experience. It's an experience. I've, I've been fortunate enough to have met him a couple of times since his release. This isn't the first time. But it's the first time that we've had the media like this. Um, but it's an experience. Do you ever think, did you ever think that he would be coming back here as possibly the next president? Yes, yeah, it was a big possibility for sure. What, when you were a prison guard and he was a prisoner? For sure, yeah. You actually thought that would happen? Well, it was always, uh, it was, there was no secret about it that the government 
was thinking about releasing Mr. Mandela and other political prisoners. So, I mean, one expected it, and with the change going on in the country all along, one, one knew that it would eventually arise, that he would be released, and um, they could possibly return as, as you said, an ex-president. And was he given special treatment because of that? Not from me, no. No, I, I, I worked with Mr. Mandela, but not very often. We worked on, I worked with him on weekends sometimes. Um, I met him a lot in the office because I did admin work, and I met him in the daytime when he came to the offices, but uh, I sometimes worked with him on weekends. But as his prison warder, did you treat him with respect? Oh, for sure, but I treat all prisoners with respect. Okay, let's go to the shrine. Yes. The Israel, the, the raid yesterday. Oh, yes. On, on the headquarters. Yeah. I see, up the, the Western Cape. internal stability unit, yes. yes. Your, your reaction to that? I'd well, we condemn that in the strongest terms. Right. And, uh, well, you want to come to the shrine? Yes, I think so. <laughs> hmm? No, we'll just walk. Just it's too close, it's too, too near. Uh, please don't tumble. Don't trip. Yes, came on. There was uh, an advertisement uh, for from a kennel, you know, uh, where they keep uh, dogs. And they said uh, in the advertisement, these are good dogs. They bark at natives. Juncture in, in, our, in our history for something like that to happen. Um, it's, it's, you know, are you going to demand that they produce the evidence that they claim they have? You see, that show, all that I can say is that uh, it shows this shrine is in his honor. I uh, first made application in 1964 uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, we should be allowed to come here. It was only <coughs> in 76 uh, that uh, they eventually allowed us to come here. And uh, after the headquarters of the prison had warned me, uh, that uh, when they when I apply and they say no, I must accept that. And uh, but uh, I persisted, and in 1976 we were then allowed to come and see the show. <coughs> and uh, he used to move around after we were locked up, and then uh, on Sundays because uh, the. Muslim community used to leave uh, food here, biryani, samosas, and this prisoner was aware of this, and he would come here and eat the food. And the way to read until later well, at first, uh, you know, they, um, you are allowed to keep on the nights, the lights in accordance uh, with uh, the uh, standard of education you are studying for. And uh, some of the new orders don't know whether you are studying for JC or matric or... Uh, Oh, yes. Did you, find, did you manage to find some sort of peace or sanctuary when you came, when you were eventually allowed to visit this place? Well, uh, of course, uh, we respect all religions, including uh, the Muslim religion. There's a boxer, you see. There's been a boxer, so. Not very good. And then I'm, I'm hoping that there's a ticket for me. If there isn't, then I'm going to come with you to, and I'll, I'll just have to sleep oh. over. I'm, I'm supposed to leave tonight. Yeah? Oh, I see, I yes, see. Joyce is going to stay overnight with you. Oh, I see, so, I see. Why do you doubt if there's a ticket? We, we don't know. We haven't heard from uh, Togo yet, but we'll, we'll find out when we get to the airport. Oh, I see. We didn't take a, a return ticket. No, because we came in, in the private plane. Oh, I so see, I see, I see. Okay. And uh, the plane is going to remain here. Plane is. Did you find it? Yeah, I thought it was. It won't be easy to come up. Yeah, well, that's a good one. Like a great escape, eh? Bye.
Well, it's going to do that along the way. Do you want to go down? Huh? Going down, please. We'd like All right. Down as well. Uh, water drops. And uh, just use them for cooking crayfish. And at the end of it, just clean it. Clean the drum from outside. Did you eat them there and then? Did you brand them on the beach? Yes, right them on the beach. And then, of course, uh, we rewarded the water by giving him some crayfish and to take for this family.